Hello guys, we are back with our next tutorial. In this tutorial, let us go through pumping lemma for regular grammar. Guys, please concentrate, guys, because pumping lemma is there are two pumping lemmas. One is for regular language and one sorry regular grammar, and other is for context-free grammar. So you should never confuse context-free A B C D and here R. So here we'll be having five variables. So here we will be having three variables. So that's the only difference. That's it. The whole concept is same. The steps that we follow are same, and everything is same. Okay. So pumping lemma for a regular grammar. It is also an important theory. It is an important theory to check whether the given string is accepted by the regular expression or not. So it is a justification or a theorem or a proof which we try to do for a given expression. So our given string, we try to get it is accepted or not as a result. Fine. Okay. So the proof, proof or theorem. So let L be a regular language. Then there exists a constant p such that every string w belongs to L. So the thing in this is let L be a regular language here. regular language is l the single constant is p and the length of a string is l sorry length of the string is mod w fine okay so it is a condition that mod w should be greater than or equal to p that's the first condition and we break the string w into three parts x y z here the combination of x and y should be greater than p and alone y should be greater than 0 because the combination will be like this guys x power i power k z it may be i k j any letter fine for all okay here also we took a k so for all k greater than or equal to 0 the string x y power k z is also in l so this is a basic introduction guys so the steps for doing this problem okay the basic steps for doing this problem are initially the first step you will be assuming that our language is regular so it is just an assumption so pumping lemma should hold the language l so initially the pumping lemma will be holding the language l fine okay so it is having a length p and mod p is greater than that's the same condition now we will be finding the string and we'll be dividing the x y z into three parts such that power i sometimes consider few more ways okay so if we take a small example a power i b power i i greater than 0 so for these kind of problems initially you will be assuming guys will be assuming and you will be reversing the process that is nothing but initially you will be assuming and saying that yes it is a regular language and at the end you will be showing that it is not a regular language like contradiction or anything like that right okay so i took a small piece of paper for our explanation okay so a power i is equals to b power i so i'll be breaking this into three parts fine so initial part will be containing a power uh, let us assume n this will be containing a power m this will be containing b power i fine okay sorry for that i didn't notice that okay so he gave that prove that a power i b power i i greater than 0 is not regular so we need to prove that so now write the initial stages that we are assuming that from the book you can observe guys just observe the book and you can write the points according to your own language it's fine so now we will be assuming the value this is x y power k and z okay so according to this condition you justify that n plus m is equals to i okay so now once you are substituting them here so we will be assuming the value of k as 2 so a power n a power 2m b power i so now the combination has became 
n plus 2m bi so if i is equals to 2 and n is equals to 1 and m is equals to 1 in that situation a is equals to a power 3 and b power 2 here i is not equals to i hence this is not a regular language so in this way in this way by breaking the single term into three parts we will be using this pumping lemma so basically when we apply pumping lemma we need to prove that it is not a regular language so we need to prove the contradiction so now i hope everyone got a clear idea on this so in the next tutorial we will be going through the last topic of this chapter that is nothing but my hill Nerod theorem that is nothing but table filling method it is really simple and easy and this method is also used for reducing the finite automata that is nothing but deterministic finite automata so let us meet in the next tutorial thank you thanks for watching